Prehistory In prehistoric times, music was developed and performed in cultures that existed before the invention of writing. The study of the music of that era is confronted by the lack of relevant archaeological evidence found in ancient sites. To address this limitation, researchers turn to musical ethnology or comparative musicology, which consists of comparing the music of contemporary indigenous peoples with that believed to have been practiced in prehistoric cultures. In addition, cognitive and behavioral analysis techniques are used, as well as anatomical studies and the archaeological record. Experts agree that the Upper Paleolithic, specifically the Solutrean, approximately 21,000 to 17,000 BC, and Magdalenian, approximately 1700010000 BC, periods, were crucial to the development of music in the early stages of humanity. These periods are noteworthy because they contain the greatest amount of evidence of sound activity by early hominids. What sound traces can we find in that long, remote period of time? To answer this question, we must resort to two types of evidence, rock art and the remains of primitive instruments, always taking into account the necessary precautions. There are prehistoric artistic representations that suggest the early interest of human beings in the production of sounds. An example of this is the anthropomorphic figure found in the Trois-Frères cave, located in Montesquieu-Vent in the department of Arige, southwestern France. This figure seems to hold a musical instrument, possibly a primitive bow or a flute. Another example is the well-known Venus de Lossel, found at Marquet, in the department of Dorgone, also in southwestern France. This figure carries what appears to be an animal horn, possibly a bison horn, an instrument widely used in different cultures throughout history. At a site in Mezin, Ukraine, six mammoth bones were discovered that showed signs of having been drilled. These bones were found together with other pieces of ivory that were decorated with ochre, mallets and other similar elements. The purpose of these objects is still being debated. Rattles made of bones or seeds have also been found, as well as conches and horns that are believed to have been used to produce sounds when blown. In European sites, mainly flutes, whistles and possible flutes, some made of bone and others of wood, have been discovered. Some of these pieces date from about 30,000 years ago and were made of short bones, such as phalanges, and produced sound when blown on. The oldest flute recognized by the scientific community as of May 2012 is an instrument made from a swan's ulna bone, dating back to approximately 36,000 years before the present. It was discovered at the Geissenklostral archaeological site in Germany. Although originally estimated to be 17 centimeters long, only 12 centimeters have been preserved. The flute has three holes that were created using some kind of tool. At the same site, in 2009, a flute made of vulture bone and another made of mammoth ivory were found. A dating analysis revealed that these two pieces are 43,000 years old, making them the oldest known remains of musical instruments to date. This site is associated with Homo sapiens. In 1995, a flute was discovered in the Divj Babe cave in Slovenia, with an approximate age of 45,000 years, although recently a dating of 43,100 years has been proposed. This flute was carved from a cave bear femur. Due to the context in which it was found, this instrument has been associated with Homo neanderthalensis. Although this interpretation is controversial, through these findings, it is possible to speculate how humans of the time began to develop a certain musical awareness. These artifacts do not simply emit a sound, but can produce different pitches or tones. This suggests an early attempt to organize sounds. In addition to flutes, numerous remains of what are known as rhombuses have been discovered throughout the 20th century, especially in French soils. At sites such as La Roche, Lottery Bass, or Bade Gaul, all in Dordogne, or Lesbug, in the department of haute garonne also in the southwest of the country. The rhombuses are flat pieces, made of stone, bone, or wood, with a length of between 15 and 20 centimeters, to which a rope is tied at one end. When they are spun forcefully in the air, a loud, 
piercing hum is created. In addition to these instruments, different varieties of lithophones have also been found, which are percussion idiophones made of stone, as well as drums dating from the Neolithic period, approximately between 10,000 and 300 BC. For example, a clay membranophone has been discovered in Bernberg, in the state of Saxon-Anhalt, in northeastern Germany, which is estimated to date between 600 BC and 3000 BC. Reproductions of all these instruments have been made using tools similar to those that might have been available to early man, and have been tested for both workability and sonority. Origin of music. At this point, considering that prehistoric mankind had the ability to produce sounds, we are faced with an almost impossible question to answer. What is the origin of music? During the last 200 years, all kinds of theories have been proposed. Some are related to language, to the evocation of sounds from the natural environment, or to basic emotional and communicative aspects. Some of these theories have been based on ethnological studies of contemporary so-called primitive societies. Although we must consider that the historical time in which these societies live may influence their practices and leave certain misunderstandings. One theory suggests that music may have emerged gradually from the natural sounds and rhythms present in the environment, such as birdsong, the sounds of the wind and the flow of rivers. In this sense, early humans could have imitated and replicated these sounds using their own voice and body as instruments. Another theory suggests that music may have emerged as part of ritual and ceremonial practices. In this context, music would have been used to communicate with the divine, to invoke spirits or to express emotions and feelings in a sacred context. Some researchers also suggest that music may have evolved as a form of social communication and to strengthen bonds between members of a community. Through rhythm, melody and dance, people may have expressed their collective identity, shared narratives and transmitted knowledge and traditions. We will never be able to discover with certainty the origin of music. According to Darwin's speculation, music may have emerged as an adaptive advantage in early humans, playing a role similar to language and used to charm the opposite sex. The word enchant itself derives from the ancient chanted formulas of medieval sorcerers. This strategy is not uncommon in the animal kingdom. If Darwin had had the opportunity to enjoy the BBC documentaries narrated by David Attenborough, he would surely have illustrated his statement with the most outstanding example of all, the lyrebird of Australia. The males of this species are masters in the art of imitating the songs of other birds in their environment, plagiarizing more than 20 species. According to cognitive psychologist Jeffrey Miller, music and dance demonstrate reproductive fitness in two ways. First, one cannot sing and dance in a coordinated manner without physical health and vigor. Only a well-oiled machine can perform such feats. In the Neolithic, mastery of useless skills was an indicator of hunting ability and, therefore, of the ability to secure resources. Today, being able to fill stadiums with diehard fans acts as an indicator of wealth and affluence. While the context has changed, deep down we are still pursuing what our biology demands. In addition to sex and reproduction, vocal skills can provide other advantages. For example, attracting animals, a resource that certain cultures still use today. In the Andes Mountains, it is common to hear muleteers direct their animals by means of guttural expressions with musical overtones. The katajak, the throat singing practiced by Inuit women, sometimes imitates the squawking of geese, possibly a vestige of its original function. The voice is also a useful resource for marking territory, something that anyone who has listened to South American howler monkeys can easily observe. According to David Huron, a specialist in music cognition, the ability to provide accurate predictions about the environment based on partial acoustic information was beneficial in a hostile environment. It never hurts to anticipate the movements of the leopard lurking under my favorite acacia tree. In several respects, sound surpasses vision, it transmits in the dark, crosses physical barriers, and travels through angles and around corners. 
In contrast, other authors see our innate musical ability as a byproduct of evolution, rather than a direct consequence of it. According to Steven Pinker, the emotion we experience with a well-designed sequence of notes is simply an accompaniment that the evolution of language has carried with it. Compared to language, vision, social reasoning, and knowledge of the physical world, music could disappear from our species and the rest of our lifestyle would remain largely intact. Music seems to be a purely technological pleasure, a cocktail of recreational drugs that we ingest through the ear to stimulate a variety of pleasure circuits at once. Musicologist Joseph Jordan posits that complete silence is often perceived as a sign of danger, and that whistles and primitive humming would have been used to fill those chilling voids, albeit without providing real adaptive advantages. It is very likely that the human voice was the first musical instrument. Since it is a prodigious instrument ranging from singing to whistling to humming to consonant clicks in different languages, such as the Kosa of Southern Africa. In this process, the language variant that parents use to communicate with their babies, known as motherese or materns, is likely to have played a key role. This is a particularly melodic and rhythmic form of communication, necessary for strengthening bonds and transmitting language, a fundamental tool. Presumably, soon after the voice, sound resources that did not require a great effort, such as clapping and other simple percussion elements, were incorporated. These elements operated as a rhythmic complement to the sound of the vocal cords. The next step was the creation of musical instruments themselves, made and designed specifically to produce musical sounds. According to the University of Tübingen team that investigated these findings, the early development of music may have contributed to the maintenance of larger social networks, possibly helping to facilitate the demographic and territorial expansion of modern humans compared to the culturally more conservative and demographically more isolated Neanderthal population. Recent findings support this bold hypothesis by confirming the irreplaceable role of music as a social lubricant. Collective singing releases oxytocin, a neurotransmitter involved in social bonding. The body synchronization associated with dance, which for millennia was intrinsically linked to music, would have created new bonds and strengthened existing ones. In any case, there may be some truth to all of these hypotheses. Throughout this long period of time, human beings have demonstrated a sensitivity to the transcendent, as suggested by burial finds. In this sense, music, as an ungraspable and invisible manifestation par excellence, was probably one of the principal means of generating transcendent meanings. Music could have had a propitiatory purpose in hunting, as indicated by the Chouafer sorcerer, or possibly was related to fertility in the case of the Venus of Lossal. Imagine the disturbing power of the sound of a rhombus, with its powerful hum amplified by the echo of a cave, audible over a long distance. A concert in today's age carries with it a strong symbolic charge, related to the institution that organizes it or to the social group that joins in by participating in a specific musical style. Throughout history, music has been, more than a mere organization of sounds, a point of reference and a functional tool to satisfy the various demands of society playing a specific role within the social fabric. Prehistoric man seems to have used sound and music to endow his society with specific meanings and utilities. In a sense, we have continued this discovery of our most remote ancestors. If you liked the video, please like, share, comment, subscribe to the channel and activate the notification bell.